We're developing a new soda and we need to know how many cans on average people drink each week. So, you're going to do a survey? Mm hmm. I'm going to be very scientific about it and call a person at random. I figure their answer is as good as any. You drink 25 cans a week? Great! The boss is going to love this. Now, go get me a coffee, will you? Hey, Joe, I'm worried. How many cans of soda would you drink in a week? Me? <laughs> no, I don't touch the stuff. Christopher was asked to find the mean number of sodas consumed by people in a week. That's a population mean. But he didn't go about it very well, he spoke to only one person. If you're trying to infer something about a population, you shouldn't just measure one value of that population. As Mary showed, individual values can vary quite dramatically across the population. Instead, what you should do is collect and measure a sample. Samples, especially large ones, behave quite nicely. But what does nicely really mean? My chapter on sampling distributions is about how samples behave. Join me in my textbook as we explore introductory statistics through engaging narratives where students will save Christopher from drowning in a sea of soda, see how beer can be used to calculate the average age of marriage, help tree-hugging Todd complete his environmental reports, and many more. To enhance the textbook content, I've also developed an instructional video series, audio podcasts, slide packs, algorithmic homework to give real-world experience in applying statistics, and e-learning that is so interactive students tell me it's like having a tutor on hand 24-7. See you soon.